Hey everybody, uh, it's Elon Barinholtz. I'm a professor at Florida Atlantic University and I'm working on a generative theory of cognition in the brain. And it's all based on large language models, the things that underlie chat GPT. And the core idea is that the, the basic math uh, of how these things run isn't just a metaphor for thinking about the mind and the brain, but it is actually the fundamental core algorithm that is what our brain is running. So it's not even about explaining the brain, it's about what is the hardware of the brain, what's the software, what's the algorithm that it's instantiating. And what I want to talk about today is this, this idea of uh, complexity, which riddles the enterprise of uh, building machines that can do smart stuff and it's been uh, it, it, it's an intricate and complex mathematical field that tries to capture what com computer systems are and aren't going to be able to do uh, and, in, and in what time and the notion the the framework, uh, the computational framework, is based on some, something like a Turing machine. And what I think we've learned in the last uh, couple of years is that we can definitively say that that's not how the brain works. And then the, the question then becomes, okay, well, what lessons from computationalism uh, actually may have relevance? to thinking about cognition. So I'm obviously going out on a, on a, in some ways on a theoretical limb, but I don't think it's, I think it's a very firm limb. I don't think it's gonna snap by saying that human cognition, at least linguistically expressed cognition, like what I'm doing right now, all philosophy, science, ultimately math, math is gonna be uh, a tool used by this linguistic system. Um, but all of it is going to be folded into a, an autoregressive um, model similar to what large language models do. And if that's the case, then the kinds of questions we were interested in asking in relation to comp computational systems are still going to be relevant, but only in regards to a symbolic a sort of classical computational systems. In other words, the computers that we have uh, and the way they operate and they run is still going to be an area for complexity theory to, to operate. The question in my mind is, okay, are there lessons learned there that could potentially fold over to the human mind slash brain? And I think at, certainly at a, at a high level, there are commonalities, but then there, there are very distinct differences. And maybe those are what are most interesting in some ways in about th thinking about this contrast is that the, the brain doesn't break. Uh, the brain is not a computational system in that what happens at time step, um, you know, t plus 10 isn't necessary for doing time step t plus 1. And therefore, there isn't this contingency break in this brittleness that's inherent to sort of symbolic computing, where you have to get to the end of the argument uh, to find out what the argument was, such that you can now say, what am I supposed to do with this input? The autoregressive model says there's one rule, one update rule, and that is next token, and there's no contingencies built in. And that means it's an extremely simple computational algorithm, uh, first of all, uh, it's, it's, it's simple in the, in the sense, first of all, you can write it down very simply, um, uh, but that of course, you know, Kolmogorov complexity or something, uh, what you've got here is, is, is probably easy in some ways to instantiate in hardware because of its inherent simplicity. Um, but I think even more deep than the simplicity is this unbreakability. So, you know, computer programs hang and, and, they, and they loop. Um, and 
that's because of this inherent brittleness of this, this, this contingency, these dependencies, uh, that uh, it goes beyond just next token. But if you can solve things with next token, that means you can't F up the system too hard. Uh, because what can happen is, like a stream running down water, it's going to hit a rock, it's just going to go around it. And then it's, that's what the stream does. And it's computing that. And so what you throw at it, and that's you know, all of the context, whatever is going on in our uh, sort of computational environment it, that goes into our input, is what shape the stream is going to take. But that's called computing. And there's no such thing as the stream saying, wait, I wasn't supposed to do that. Go back up and start over. Um, no, the stream runs. Now, in the case of cognition, uh, in the case of, of human cognition, of course, you've got to think about functionality. It's got to run and do something. The stream is computing something, of course, and it's not just defined within the stream. You can build uh, an autoregressive system that, that spits out pure nonsense. Well, I mean, of course, take any untrained transformer, and it will do something. Uh, and it, it is autoregressive, and it's doing the computation, so to speak, it's supposed to do. But that's like a stream that's, and maybe the metaphor is going to break down real fast, but, you know, a stream that's just going off in all different directions and isn't sort of actually computing a shape of a trajectory, which is, you know, we can think of it as a stream of, as doing. Um, we want, our, we want our autoregressive competition to do things, and, and it does do things. Uh, and, and of course, that's the essential question, is how do you build something that does stuff, and not just language, by the way, but maybe other stuff too, in this fail-safe way? Um, I think that's, th that's the question, the new question, in some, I think, um, of, of psychology, of neuroscience, of, I, I would say, even philosophy, um, whatever this amalgam is uh, that's trying to figure out the nature of thought and, and computation is how does such a system that's just doing next token, mind you, you've got uh, you know, the residual, you've got the context, it's, it's, and, you can, and you can represent that in very rich ways, um, but you're still doing this kind of next token. How do, you, how do you get utility out of that, the kind of utility that we know we have? Um, this is... This is what the, the new science, the new field has to, has to do, has to figure out. Um, how do you build things out of that? Um, but I think it's a very key core insight um, that there's an anti-brittleness inherent in this kind of building system this way. And so this is what evolution, nature, uh, information itself, computation itself, sort of converged on as being the solution. Anyway, thanks uh, for listening. If you want to subscribe, I have a Substack. Uh, it's at Generative Brain. Uh, you can also find me at baronholtz.ai. Uh, I'm also sometimes on X slash Twitter. Uh, so check that out as well. And uh, hope to see you again next time.